You want to talk about reading? I have co-founded an online bookstore called All Store. And honey, it is a blast. We are moving the conversation forward. All Stora is supporting authors. It is supporting you, all voices, everywhere. This is a platform that I am in love with because the conversation needs to move forward. It really does. Through books, through conversations, through community. So go to allstora.com to find out more. Honey, it's all about I'll start. Since the invention of the printing press made literature finally available to the masses, bookstores have been a haven for wine mums, pretentious video essayists, and otakus, the three genders, the world over. Once upon a time, there were bookshops in every town, from small independent resellers to giants that try to stamp those last pieces of soul and care out of the world of book retailers forever. Many thought that war would wage on for eternity, but everything changed when the Amazon nation attacked. Led by a bold man whose name literally means Jeffrey Kisses in Spanish, a man who somehow managed to make William Shatner look reasonable, the man behind the greatest sex of all time. I love you, alive girl. Amazon, the online bookstore, tore through the warring factions of book retail like Genghis Khan through the steppe. There was a new great Khan in the book world, and none would dare rise to challenge him, until one man stepped up. A drag queen with a penchant for controversy to rival that of Jeffrey Kisses himself. From that time he said, transitioning since day one, bitch! After being criticized for repeatedly using transphobic slurs and preventing transitioning drag queens from competing on his show, to following that up by posting a trains flag. Uh-huh. I guess Thomas the Tank Engine needs a Pride Month too? And most famously, for the fracking. Oh, the fracking? No, no, not that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's fact. Only RuPaul Charles, host of all four good Drag Race franchises. Sorry, Canada. I don't mean it. And also, t sorry, Thailand. I don't. I don't mean that either. I stand. Pangina was robbed. Anyway, only RuPaul Charles dared to challenge the ruthless kissing capitalism. Man. But when the world needed him most, he opened a storefront to the book distributor every independent bookstore basically already uses, and said he was doing something special and gay with it. But he also has a book club and sections for different types of queer people. So that makes up for doing absolutely zero curation on the selection of outright fascist, anti-queer, racist and anti-Semitic books available from the store and running what seems possibly like a scam? Maybe? Maybe not? We'll talk about it. But I believe RuPaul Charles can save the world of book retail. Also, I don't believe that. This is the easiest choice that I have had to make this entire season. RuPaul is going home. What was I supposed to do? I'm just a humble newspaper columnist, Bridget Empire, science and culture correspondent for the Daily Telegraph, which is, of course, available on RuPaul's bookstore. And I mean every single issue. From our first scroll released in 120 CE, breaking the story of how Hajin was trying to make the Roman Empire woke. I mean, wall? Come on, the loony lefties in the Senate are really pulling our leg with this one. But this issue, this one right here, is proudly sponsored by Alstora, a bookstore that's basically a reseller, but with RuPaul's face stuff on the front of it, and one that promises to share profits with authors, which is good, but doesn't specify how which is bad. Anyway, as long as it's sponsoring us, the Daily Telegraph is going to take a firm pro-online bookstore, pro-fracking and pro-drag stance. Which is a rarity for British media, that last point is anyway. We were way ahead of the curve over here though at the Daily Telegraph. Dan here helped arrange our first sponsor back in the medieval period, some drag queen called Maid Marian. She was quite popular in the local taverns, but for some reason Dan always came away from her shows with his pockets empty. Anyway, I did some digging on RuPaul Charles' extremely weird bookstore, the one that stocks all the fascist books, including books that Amazon itself won't even sell because they're so awful, like the Turner Diaries, 
the book that inspired a bunch of the worst crimes ever committed on US soil, and this children's book by Chaya Rychik of Libs of TikTok fame, a stochastic terrorist who would happily order her millions of rabid followers to kill us all. Except when I was looking at the store, that one book had just got taken down. The Turner Diaries hadn't, but Chaya's had. So clearly someone noticed that all of this looked pretty bad, but not before launching the store, doing all the publicity for it, and then leaving most of the awful stuff up anyway. Almost like whoever is running the store doesn't care about the community he claims to champion after all. And his main instinct, like the CEO of Kisses himself, is making profits. Ferengi workers don't want to stop the exploitation. We want to find a way to become the exploiters. Now, RuPaul has form for attracting controversy. As I hinted at earlier, he's had a bunch of public clashes with former Drag Race stars, such as Carmen Carrera, over multiple accusations of transphobia. Ru all of a sudden wants to be a healer? Oh, she wants to start healing after what? Uh, eight, eight years or nine years of being an asshole? Ru made transphobic jokes on the show in All Stars 1. The Ru male segment that exists to this day on Drag Race was for many years- You got female. she -mail. And her songs run the gamut from just throwing out slurs to being, well, kinda super racist, from tranny chaser to ladyboy, which... The last one, the more you look up the story behind it, the worse it gets. It's time to play female or she Besides the optics of this, Former contestants have come forward with testimony that they were forced to stop hormone therapy to come on the show, since Rue once upon a time compared going on hormones or getting gender-confirming surgery to taking performance-enhancing drugs, something that was immediately contested by drag queens who made their sheer number of plastic surgery augmentations their entire brand, such as Detox from Season 5 and All Stars 2. This went on for years, and for a while there, Rue really dug her heels in. She seems to have relaxed this attitude in recent years, though, with multiple trans drag queens competing on the show and even winning. But for years, she essentially forced trans women back into the closet to compete in the number one platform for their art. Which, yeah, that's fucked up. And even after this, he's refused to let drag kings be part of the competition, so he's not exactly being pushed all the way forward on this. And given how many years he insisted on his right to say the word, there's been a lot of harm done by his rhetoric and actions on this issue. Even if... As he hints in interviews, he considers himself to be part man and part woman, which sounds to me like Boomer for being bi-gender or gender fluid. But he certainly didn't help himself with the way he handled this. And all of that is before we get to the, the fracking. No, no, not that. Oh. <laughs> RuPaul's prime achievement is bringing drag into the mainstream, at least in the United States, with all the good and bad that comes with that. It came into the mainstream simplified, whitewashed, and with its harsher edges largely filed off. Without kings, without the trans people that pioneered the art form, without the overtly political edge that birthed it, and with the express purpose of making money, for the community as a whole, sure, but for RuPaul himself. To this day, queens have to go into massive amounts of debt to get all the material they need for the show. Naturally gatekeeping the type of drag mainstream audiences get to see, so those are the most affluent. Although I may be overstating the case here, people do get on the show from less fortunate backgrounds, but then they have to compete with people who can buy outfits from, like, literally John Paul Gaultier, so even then, it's a struggle. RuPaul also, yes, allowed fracking on land that he owns with his husband, defending himself from accusations with the very suspect line, Do you buy gas? Before you point the finger, smell it first, bitch. But that really isn't the same thing, is it? Buying gas because you have to, to live, is very different to the nature-destroying greenhouse gas releasing process that is fracking. When we buy gas, we're not doing so because we're standing against renewable energy. If he has land to frack on, he could have built a wind or solar farm instead of allowing for the destructive release of the very poison that will likely end the world. The thing is, we shouldn't be surprised about this turn of his. He's out to make money. Okay, fine. But do you know what else he's done to make money? Opened a bookstore that sells everything from the Protocols of the Elders of Zion to the best quotes of Ben Shapiro. Those among us brave enough to walk steadily towards the frontier of political discourse, regardless of the army we choose to fight for, will have heard of the legend that is Benjamin Aaron Shapiro. His voice of reason cuts through the constant bombardment of deception, lies, and irrationality that each side of the political aisle hails down upon the other. He stands through the night, while the feeble amongst us have their holes in their arguments tended to by medics, as a beacon of hope in our joint pursuit of facts and logic. 
These are his greatest quotes of his career thus far. Perhaps you came across something that would prove valuable in your own debates and discussions. Perhaps you may just place this book down inspired. In a state of horror. so inspired by the quotes of Ben Shapiro. So you might well be asking, how the fuck did this happen? Well, this is how the fuck it happened. Those of us who were following the narrative as it was being told by RuPaul himself are going to have a very different point of view on what's happening here than a lot of people who came in cold. For me, I heard about RuPaul launching a bookstore selling libs of TikTok's children's book and multiple pages of various editions of Mein Kampf, so yes, literally Hitler, and I was a little taken aback for a second. Because the news I'd seen around RuPaul and bookstores before this was the story outlined here by the Gateway Pundit. RuPaul shares rainbow bus, giving away banned books and spreading LGBTQ plus literature throughout the South. This is undeniably a good thing. Florida, most notably, but a whole bunch of states in the southern United States, have been on a crusade to ban books on queer and black issues from schools and libraries in the midst of the twin panics of the anti-LGBT groomer scare and the fight headed by Chris Rufo, who, wouldn't you know it, has books for sale in RuPaul's bookstore against what the writer's calling critical race theory. But what is actually any black history or topics on race relations? Because, you know, to get into any of that, you have to critique the USA because of all the crimes it did. But you might notice here that the mission of delivering queer books to places where they're forbidden by fascist schools is countered by selling books by those very people, from Christopher Rufo to Ron DeSantis. You can find literature from all the same people creating the problem RuPaul is trying to solve with his Rainbow Book Bus initiative on Ru's own bookstore. And before you ask, yes, the Rainbow Book Bus and the launch of Ru's questionable bookstore, Alstora, are intimately connected. In fact, while the Rainbow Book Bus will undoubtedly be doing good work, it is basically doubling as a launch event for Alstora, as the New York Times reports. As part of Alstora's kickoff, the Rainbow Book Bus will be traveling in March, from Los Angeles to the south to flight book bands. In these cities, which will include Birmingham, Alabama, Tallahassee, Florida, and Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Alstora will team up with local LGBTQ organizations to distribute thousands of books. The goal is to give away 10,000 books by the end of the year out of the brightly colored 22-foot former school bus. Now, those of you who are American or terminally online will notice that I buried the lead a bit here. You see, the Gateway Pundit, whose headline I quoted earlier, is a far-right news site. And so instead of explaining what's happening here in a normal way, they give the bullshit counter-argument to delivering simple books on black and queer issues that are banned, quoting such distinguished people as Tiffany Justice from Mums for Liberty. By the way, Tiffany Justice? Great superhero name. Children don't have unfettered access to the internet, school. I did a FOIA records request, and I want to see what kinds of internet sites are banned in schools if we're going to talk about banning, right? And the subject matter in the books that moms are concerned about are the same things that kids don't have access to on the internet. So, it just feels very hypocritical, right? Why is no one out there protesting the internet in school? And from that quote alone, you can tell that this woman is a boomer. Though, since she's representing Moms for Liberty, you could probably have guessed that already. If you think your kids can't access queer topics and black history on the internet, you're just kidding yourself. But of course, Justice doesn't really think this. She's part of the charge to ban these books because she hates queer people and hates black people. But these arguments, as presented here on this Yikes as Fuck website, are the very same narratives RuPaul will be peddling via his bookstore, given the people whose books he's selling. While in his name, his mission is to bring books on important issues to places that have unjustly banned them, he is at the same time profiting off selling this very messaging that got them banned, and that will continue to attack both his mission and his community. Hell, he's a drag queen. He should know better than to stock literature from people that literally call for drag shows to be banned, or worse. And I think over time, he might be selling less of these books. Fewer. By the time I filmed footage of the Alstora website for this video, Chaya Raichik's book had been taken down. And while I have footage here of the several pages I found of different editions of Mein Kampf, when I search the storefront for Mein Kampf now, I only get literature analysing the book and the atmosphere around it, not the book itself. The backlash, it seems, has had its effect. Christopher Rufo is also gone, but Ron DeSantis is still there as is the Turner Diaries. So what does this tell us? Did Rue just throw a bunch of fascist books into a big furnace from his personal stock? Well, no. He's just running a storefront for an already established distributor. What the fact that they launched a supposed queer bookstore stocking books by all these fascist ghouls tells us is that someone, or multiple someones, got very lazy. The storefront was not at all curated. 
It was just a copy and paste of the entire catalogue of a distributor. One that stocks everything from the books that inspired decades of horrors to Ben Shapiro's best quotes. I, I can't stop thinking about that. All of the water levels around the world rise by, by let's say, five feet over the next hundred years, say 10 feet by the next hundred years, and it puts all the low-lying areas on the coast underwater, right? Which, let, let's say all of that happens. You think that people aren't going to just sell their homes and move? Just one small problem. Sell their houses to who, Ben? Aquaman! What our story is doing, in short, is taking book distributor Ingram's backhand and running a storefront where they take some of the profit and share it with some of the authors. At least that's what they're saying. We haven't seen any evidence of how they're actually doing this, but for now, let's take them at their word. This is explained more succinctly than I ever could by Jeff O'Neill at Book Riot, and so I'm just going to quote him directly now. Our story puts authors first, creating a more equitable pay structure by splicing profits and doubling writers' incomes with each book sale. Keeping fair compensation in mind, our store also makes books more accessible to readers by offering 30 to 50% off discounts on all titles. So it sounds like Alstora is splitting the margin on book sales. If Alstora charges $25, but it only costs them $20 to fulfill, it gets $5 in margin with authors. This is where the doubling writer income is coming from. They now get both their regular royalty and a share of the retail margin. The and is confusing. This is the same as the profit splitting, not some additional piece. Readers can get the discount through membership, which is $5 a month. I am guessing they are okay giving up the margin on individual sales to get that $5 in guaranteed margin every month. Unclear how slash if this is being shared with authors. There are quite a few companies out there using Ingram's backend and then trying to figure out a novel use of the profits to differentiate themselves from other stores. Bookshop.org splits with indies. Books.io, RIP, uses it for charities. Tertulia kicks it back to readers who pay a membership fee, sort of like REI, in the form of deeper discounts into ownership units in the Tertulia co-op which entitles members to a stake in the company's success over time. Each of them is trying to get you to switch your book buying, and by extension, the margin that comes along with your book buying to their store. To do so, they need to find an angle that is more attractive to book buyers than just getting the books from the cheapest place they can, which is usually Amazon. The 800 pound gorilla in this particular jungle are the publishing houses. Any one of them could have their own online store and offer the lowest price for their own titles and still turn the same profit they would in other places. They haven't done this yet for many reasons, Optics with indies and other stores, a desire to have the existing major players play a nice with them, and good old fashioned, that's not what we do at all. Ingram is the distributor for many, many bookstores, and so Rue's bookstore is nothing new. In fact, its lack of curation in what books it sells makes it somewhat less queer friendly than most independent bookstores, who don't usually sell fashion literature just because they can. What sets it apart from its competition, however, is the RuPaul branding. RuPaul himself is running a book club through the site, and you can buy memberships. It also has a list of queer books of different flavours, for example, to make them easier to find, which is good. Its profit sharing initiative too sounds maybe not innovative, but like an undeniably good thing. But they're not the only people doing this, and it's not clear how the actual mechanisms of this profit sharing will work out, we're just assuming from context, so we'll see. It could be nothing, it could be something, but what it definitely is, is just a website reselling you books from a big distributor. If you're going to buy physical books, you're much better off supporting your local indie bookstore if you have one, or ordering from one online, rather than propping up another giant front that will compete mostly with indie and queer bookstores, despite the rhetoric from RuPaul and his business partners insisting they intend to compete with Amazon. Because let's be real, even if this was the best shop front of all time, it would be an uphill battle to compete with Amazon. And this store couldn't even open as a queer bookshop without selling literature from every person on earth that's ever written that they want to put us all in the ground. Now, of course, this runs counter to RuPaul's narrative, given to People magazine. The Emmy award-winning host of RuPaul's Drag Race has announced the launch of a new online books marketplace, Alstora. The platform is an author-owned independent marketplace, housing over 10 million titles and offers fair compensation and more opportunities for women and authors of colour, as well as emerging and self-published authors. Alstora puts authors first, creating a more equitable pay structure by splitting profits and doubling writers' incomes with each book sale. Keeping fair compensation in mind, our store also makes books more accessible to readers by offering 30-50% to off discounts on all titles. Creatives, whether drag queens, philosophers or authors, are driving our culture war forward and should be properly compensated for their work, RuPaul said in a statement. As an author, I understand firsthand how impossible it feels to survive in the literary world, and we hope to create an industry-wide shift in how we purchase books and compensate authors, Savini said in a statement. Our store's mission is to empower authors and cultivate communities through the power of literature, 
made accessible to all. And we're thrilled to have the legendary RuPaul by our side. The Rainbow Book Bus began as a dreamer since developed into a flagship bookmobile program. And we're beyond excited to take these books on the road and bring them to communities who need them most, says Powell, who also serves as the executive director of the Rainbow Book Bus in a statement. We must fight censorship and attempts to reduce young people's access to inclusive stories. And a colorful and joyful bus loaded with amazing books is an antidote to hate and discrimination. That is all, of course, a lovely sentiment and would be welcome if it wasn't attached to the story that spun out of this, and one well-deserved. RuPaul is selling books by libs of TikTok and literally Hitler. It's also not a coincidence that RuPaul's got a memoir coming out this year, which you can, of course, buy on Alstora, the only queer bookshop where you can buy books that literally call for the execution of all queer people. And yes, although books by libs of TikTok and, Jesus Christ, Adolf Hitler, have been taken down at the time of writing, the Turner Diaries, one of the most dangerous books in the world, one that Amazon doesn't even dare to sell, is still there. And if you know anything about the Turner Diaries, you'll know that's a problem. The book that inspired Timothy McVeigh, it's been inciting far-right violence for decades. Timothy McVeigh, he would try to convince people for months and months and months, his circle of friends, he tried to convince them, he tried to get them to read the Turner Diaries and stuff like that. The Turner Diaries is a racist, dystopian novel written by a neo-Nazi leader. The book reached the pinnacle of its popularity in 1995 once a connection to Timothy McVeigh was made. Still, I want to believe this will change. I desperately want to give RuPaul the benefit of the doubt. And not just because I went from a dedicated RuPaul skeptic to binging every season of Drag Race during lockdown, but because I genuinely think he thinks he can have his heart in the right place and make a ton of money. That he can marry his two personas, his queer art and activism, and his business acumen. The ruthless capitalist mindset that brought drag to the world stage, the ultimate combination of these personas. But he's wrong if he thinks he can ultimately play both of those roles without cutting corners in one of them. And the one where the corners are being cut is unfortunately the side that we would all want to succeed. Bringing drag into the mainstream came with a price. A hefty price for many who didn't fit into the new marketable image of drag RuPaul was creating, especially during the years he was having to throw trans people under the bus to keep up the squeaky clean image of cisgender queens he was selling to the masses. If the cost of distributing queer books is the spread of hateful work such as the Turner Diaries, maybe it would have been better if Ru would just use his money to support queer indie bookstores, rather than building another giant corporate entity. Happy to sell anything to make money, whilst marketing itself back to the queer community based on its optics alone. But there's still time. But ultimately, being a capitalist, the pursuit of profit above everything else, runs directly counter to the goals of queer liberation, even within a capitalist structure. The profitable thing to do isn't always going to be the thing that's right for the queer community. In fact, if it's shown as anything, it's often the opposite. Anyway, if you don't love yourself, how the hell are you going to love somebody else? Can I get an amen up in here? All right, let the music play, and thanks for watching. It's some is up in here. Welcome to my stratosphere. Hey, thank you for watching this video all the way to the end. If you like this video, why not like it, leave a comment, subscribe, and tell your friends about it. Unless your friends are RuPaul. I I'm, I'm sorry, Ru. You don't, don't sell fascist books, mate. Anyway, I am unfortunately quite poor right now, so if you are RuPaul, why not make up for your crimes against the gay community and send me some money? Jesus, why do I do this? You can give me one-time donations, RuPaul, on Coffee or PayPal, links below. Or as always, Ru, you could sign up to my Patreon, where you can get early videos, access to the members-only Discord, my Nintendo Switch friend code, and exclusive content, such as long-form interviews with Princess Weeks, Rosenkreutz, and Jesse Gender. So, Ru, you could play Smash with me. We could, I don't know, hang out in the Discord. Shoot the shit. You know. Fuck me.
Why do I improvise on the end credits? This is so stupid. Anyway, in addition to all of that good stuff, Rue, you could, if you sign up, and I know you can afford to sign up because you got a lot of money, get your name read out at the end of each video, just like these lovely people who are not RuPaul. Sarah Rudston, Jason Hay, Frank McManus, Susan Foster, Helena, Sierra Whiskey, Orestria, Ali Catgirl, Brian, John N, Scully, Jan, Lloyd Luciente, Jason Cribbett, Shield Vaden, Robin Podolsky, Exploding Turtle, Casual Observer, Terry Roberts, Manta Ray, Courtney Burmack, Stinky Slug, Philippa Tabroga, Soma Piglet, Brain Douche, Artie Wolf, Hayden Gaylor, Greg Noble, Deanna McMillan, Caroline Regalado, Alexandra Lilly, PJ Lisberal, Howard Lott, Laura Van Loon, Neronia, Scarjan, and Joey Cobalt. Thank you all so much. And, um, what, what, what other drag race joke could, 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 I, could I make right now? I think I've already, I've already, I've already done the ending. Um, maybe I should. Should I just close with a Drag Race song? No, that'll give me copyright strike. <laughs> uh, get your rights. 